so a lot of people say they're recapturing their interest and or they're you know running their expenses through their infinite banking these this i want to have an authentic combo with you you've you've i mentioned the expenses thing um i think those are two areas that we got to be very careful about and there's a lot of people that just that's where they get confused it's like they read a book and they're like oh yeah. i'm gonna go buy a car and go on vacation and i'm my i'm gonna make money and i'm gonna run my expenses and my premium is gonna equal my income and then my policy is recapturing interest and i'm paying interest back to myself and i'm like okay half truths right because <laughs> it's like i yes is it more efficient to buy a liability with a policy versus cash asterisk yes and I'm, I hope we understand the core principles and I would go out and get a bank loan and, and if I could, if I'm okay with the payment, if it's more efficient than borrowing from the insurance company and recapturing interest is essentially my money is able to grow, but my interest is going to the insurance company, not me. So these are some of the things I just want to talk about because um, I think it will be a really interesting discussion. I feel like we can talk about anything in this space. So I'll, I'll hand over the floor to you and we'll, we'll uh, further this convo. Yeah, so I have also made tweaks on this strategy as well. And I've come to the conclusion that the only expenses that I see valuable running through a policy is anything that I can earn cash back rewards on and any bill that I can actually reduce the bill by switching it from a monthly to an annual. And I laid this out in uh, a quite a few videos with my own numbers and I'll do it here quickly because it's still fresh in my mind. Um, and again, I go back to the root of which dollars I am allocating to the cash value life insurance. So me personally, in my business, I've been blessed. I'm saving a little over six figures a year in, in cash value life insurance. I have two policies myself, which equal 85,000 a year. So just dealing with one policy that I'm funding 70,000 a year, right? Yeah. It's, it's $70,000 of savings dollars, money that has no purpose yet sits in a bank account, has no purpose. Now, Instead of me sending all of that to my cash value life insurance policies, right? I I do I have like a rule where I do like a portion, right, of all of my income that I make. I have like a 10, 10, 10 type of rule that I that I do. Um, but I also was experimenting with the whole expense, right? Running expenses. I'm like a lot of insurance guys talk about this. And they're recovering, and they're talking about recovering 50% opportunity costs and these wild numbers. And I'm like, something's not adding up for me because I'm not getting the same results. So I, you know, before I practice, before I teach a thing, I like to try to practice it and experiment it with first to see what I get. So from my 70 grand that I'm putting into this one whole life insurance policy contract, $26,000 of bills, expenses, I'm going to put in the policy first, then borrow out and pay the expense, right? And I want to see what is the net result from that. Um, and the other thing I let my clients know is right off the bat, when you start a policy, the first one to two years, your most expensive years. So you're already negative maybe 18% right. or more, right. depending on how you split the premiums and the cash value dollars, right? So if you did a 50-50 split where you got 50% of 70 grand going to cash, 50% of your 70 grand going to um, whole life insurance-based premium, you have a net loss technically on the cash value in the first year of more than negative 50%. It's like negative 60% or more, which is why I always tell my clients, listen, that's a bad strategy. There's agents that are designing policies that way for infinite banking, calling it infinite banking. And it's, it's not ideal. It's not efficient. So I say, you know, lower those premiums down, increase the cash value a little bit more to help with your 
negative starting point in year one. So that's the first thing. And I account for that. 26 grand I've identified in my bills and my expenses. This is money per year that I can run through a credit card. Okay. Earning anywhere from two to 3% in cash back rewards. And the net number that I recapture is 12%, which is $3,120. Where's that that 12% coming from? Is that from points? From point, yeah, cash straight up cash back rewards and points that I can convert to statement credit, right? Okay. The the real more realistic number is somewhere anywhere from three to five k, but I went with the lower okay. number, right? Okay. So three thousand one twenty. So technically, I've reduced my expenses from twenty six thousand, right, minus the three one twenty. So now I'm at twenty two. Is really what I'm actually pulling from the policy as a loan. Okay. say 5%, right? I know the loan interest rates have gone down to three to 4% as of right. late. Um, but in 2018, 2019 is when I established my policy. So loan rate is, is say 5%. And you're, and you're pulling out, when you say pulling out, you're borrowing against to pay off the credit card balance. To pay off the credit card, yes. Wouldn't so the credit I'll card balance be actually 26 because the points would come at a later date? So- the points I can uh, accumulate this. It, it your points are accumulated immediately, okay. so I can just every every um, due date I can apply it. Okay. Right. So uh, was it three twenty divided by twelve? It's like two hundred sixty dollars a month okay. that I can apply to the different credit cards. So it lowers the bill. Okay. Right. Okay. And then my net, my actual net out of the policy is is this number, right? Okay. So in addition to this 26 grand, the actual, when I look at the actual cost of my bills, it's a little bit higher than 26 grand because I was paying, say, a monthly expense of um, a lot of the business subscriptions that I have. And you know how when you sign up for Zoom or Kajabi or ConvertKit, when you pay annual, you save 10%, right. say 15%. Right. Right. Uh, Netflix pay for the year, right? Whatever it is. So I look at all those things and I convert everything to annual, run it on the card. The card that I get is usually a 0% for 6, 12, 18, 24 months. I'm paying the monthly minimum, right? You're you're paying the monthly minimum on the card? On the card, yes, because there's no interest, right? Fair. And then I let the money in the policy season in the policy for as long as humanly possible. And then I'll pull it out in one shot, pay the credit card off in one shot, do it again the next year. Right. How are you so, paying that loan back though? See, that is the issue. So m- what I do is I actually don't pay the loan at all. I, I let it stay outstanding and I just cover the interest. So 22,880 times 5% simple interest is 1,144. So in this example, technically I'm okay. It didn't cost me any more dollars because this money offset my borrowing costs for the policy. Does that make sense? I'm tracking what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that right there is technically a win. Okay. That's cool but I'm still negative on the policy itself. It, that's going to take maybe four to seven years before the cash value starts to break even and start producing a positive one, two, three, four percent return. So the conclusion I've come to is that this can only work for a few years before it don't matter because I'm saving on average uh, roughly 15% by switching from monthly to annual. So it's a 15% saving on average. And I'm getting 12% uh, a total off the cash back rewards, right? Uh, A a total uh, net savings, right? Uh, Or cash back rewards of of everything that's uh, running through the card itself, right? So I'm earning three to 5K off the bills. So that's 
If I'm doing right. the math right, right. it's 12% right. of 12, that right. number. I, okay, cool. I, yep. You want me even to- with okay. even with that, that still negative. And eventually this number starts to get pretty high. The your your borrowing costs on the loans because yeah. you gotta do it again yeah. the next year. And your your next outstanding year, next loan year. is bigger and your interest charge this number is growing. Yep. Mm-hmm. So eventually this supersedes this. So now I am coming out of pocket. And then there's the whole notion of, yes, when you pay interest back to your policy that, you know, it it goes to the company and the company pays you in the form of dividends. Okay, but that's that's not a reliable um, measurement for me. Like, I know what I'm getting from the insurance company. This is a completely different cost. So I've come to the conclusion that it only works for a period of time. It should not be a lifetime type of thing in the policy. Uh, I don't see the full value in it. Right. Um, well, I know I can do. I know I can do better. Y- yeah. Other things. Yeah. So, so I'll I'll give you my two cents on this, and I appreciate you breaking this math down. Um, I I think I think number one, um, what is the main goal when you read Infinite Banking, um, and what Nelson talked about? It, it actually came in the form of a of a shot analogy. Where he talks about volume versus rate. It doesn't matter, you know, how fast the the liquid goes into your arm. It's it's the volume that can really get you in trouble. And so my, I think we can both agree that the volume of savings is a good thing. If we can help our yes. clients save more money, they're having a greater volume, growing. Hopefully, and by nature, they'll have control over those dollars, which I'll be the first to say. Some some people will do worse with control because of bad behavior and habits. But mm-hmm. we're making the we're making the assumption that if you have control, it's going to be a positive thing. That's why this is not for everybody. And yeah. I simplify it as much as here's my principle: the most efficient way in whatever scenario is what is allowing me to save more money. Now, if we if I'm borrowing at five, to use your example and I am buying a CD at 4% in one year, what my policy is going to grow regardless. We can agree on that. Yeah. My policy is going to internally give me all the benefits of life insurance, which, which is, is amazing. But if I'm borrowing at five and earning four, I just created a negative 20% arbitrage on my money in that year. Yes. Like, hey, yes. let me pay, let me pay you five dollars and you give me four back. I'm not I'm not a genius. I and you would say some people would say, well, I'm a genius because my policy's growing and I got four dollars. Well, your policy's going to grow regardless. Mm-hmm. So so you'd be better off not doing that transaction. Um, and so mm-hmm. I and this might be this is this is why I want to have a discussion in that scenario that you went through mathematically. You'd be better off paying cash for those expenses. I, I love what you're doing, annualizing using credit cards. Mathematically, you would actually be better off paying cash and and allowing yourself to take that extra savings versus the monthly, mm-hmm. since you're saving that twelve plus five percent, all those things, and just saving more in the policy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's yeah, like, see. you know. And then the other thing is the other thing is, um, and I this is I get people that don't like when I say this. But it's like, if I'm going to make a purchase, let's say it's a car, yeah. if I'm going to make a purchase, the, the first, first thing I need to do is I need to say, should I buy this car? It has nothing to do with, do I have the money? Do, do I have the credit capacity? It's like, should I buy this car? And you, we need to have some kind of framework to decide that. A lot of times we, Dave Ramsey puts that, you know, how you should buy something with what you should buy. So I'm going to buy this car and it's $10,000. And I have $200,000 of cash value. I have money in the bank and I have a credit union that I could borrow uh, borrow from. And it really comes down to I'm looking at my s- scenario and saying, okay, payment is not an issue in this case. So I'm either going to take a policy loan at 5%. Now a lot of these companies are 4%. So 4% policy loan. My, I could take a 0%. I could take my cash, money out of cash. Um, or I could take a, you know, a bank or a credit union, and let's say it's a 2.5. In my head, I w- I'm going to take the 2.5, take, take that, pay the credit union, B 
because I respect that my money in my policy and my money in the banking, I, re- I have a more respect for liquidity and control more than two and a half percent. Got it. You know, and so it's just, it's, 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 um, that's the thing where, where, you know, if we have, if we have a hatred for banks, mm-hmm. life insurance can be a, a, a way to okay. stay fed. Yeah. You know? So you just brought up a good point. So there is a sector of people that just don't want to deal with dealerships, don't want to deal with borrowing from banks and taking loans. So, so I say, well, in that case, yeah, you could save, save your money in cash value life insurance and borrow from yourself to finance something. Right. And if right. you were to compare it to um, getting a 5% car loan, 7% car loan versus a 4% simple interest right. loan on your policy, right. yeah, there is a, a, a benefit there. Um, so I, I definitely work with a lot of different clients that um, do that. And I've also created content where I talk about right. running right. bills through your policy in the most, in my, in my thought process, I'm okay, if you're going to do it, cause I can't stop you. Right. If you're going to do it, at least do it right. in the most efficient right. possible way you can. Right. And you're still going to net a negative. Right. And, right. and, and I, I use appreciate my numbers. It. Right. I use my numbers to prove it. Like well, you're eventually well, going to net a negative in, in the right. first couple of years, maybe not if you do right. it right, but you're eventually going to net a negative, especially when you compare it to right. something else you could have done. Like maybe like I'm at a point now where I use my policies for uh, syndicating. Right. And right. I also use it to actually run the personal side of, of my life. And even the, the business side. So I know my business is going to produce 30, 40% profits. Let me, you can then argue that, oh, well, if he ran his ex- business expenses through his policy. It's costing him X, but he's producing a 30, 40% return. Okay. Well then he made sense of it. So right. As long as you're growing your business, it's, it's just as one long of those as you're growing right? your business. How many people, it's one of those things, how many people are going to do that? Business? You know, exactly. It's like exactly. invest in your number one asset, which I'm a huge fan of. Like, I'm we're gonna double our business, and you know, we go mm-hmm. out of business. But here's here's what I'll say, <laughs> and, and I, I want to say two other things. Is is like I really appreciate this convo because I think we're I think we're gonna help a lot of people, and just because there's gonna be some people that really relate with how you're articulating, mm-hmm. and there's gonna be some people that relate with I with how I, I articulate it, and the hope is to increase the financial literacy of just both of our communities. Um, so the so the thought process is number one. Um, if, if like, I'm not a huge fan of using, you know, policy to pay off debt or to buy lifestyle stuff, I've made that clear. And the asterisk, that might be the right thing that someone needs to do because they will never start saving. They like, they'll never start. Okay. And so they're like, like okay, okay. So what's, what's better? And this goes back to Dave Ramsey. There's some people that should pay off their mortgage. There's some people that should crowd up their credit cards because it's the mortgage and the credit card that are like, they're, they're not like. It, it, you have to put in human behavior. So while I'll yes. make it very clear, I'm not going to go on record saying like do this and pay personal expenses and you know mm-hmm. you know necessarily pay off debt. It would does mathematically make sense if you're borrowing at five to pay off higher debt. That's that's mathematically a more yeah. efficient way to do it. I, mm-hmm. I will I will say that you know there are some people that that works. We just have to be super conservative because normally those are the same type of people that get in financial pinches and then their policy could be at risk because they're over leveraged. And then we have that uncomfortable conversation. The the next thing I'll say, whether it's a a debt or an an investment, and let's just suppose for the moment that it could be 12% and you're able to borrow at five and make 12%. 12%. Let's, let's, let's do the math here. You're, you're getting all the benefits of life insurance and it, you're going to get those benefits regardless. It's costing you 5%. In my book, I talk about it being a control cost and you're able to earn 12. So going back to the equation, if I give you five and you give me 12 back, that's 140% return on my money. And my cash value is still doing its thing because my policy, I'm, I'm using it as collateral. So when we talk about giving your dollar more than one job, I like that's, yeah. It, so it's my whole philosophy is if we're gonna take a if we're gonna take a borrowing if we're gonna borrow I, I call it control cost whatever that control cost is we got to make sure that whatever activity we're doing is creating a greater result or greater outcome than the cost 
of controlling capital, whether it's at US bank, life insurance policy, or if it's paying cash, and there's a cost of paying cash because it's when we pay cash, we're taking this money and now we're, we're surrendering it. We're never able to have it back. So it's not just free. There's a cost yeah. to giving up control. And so again, man, like I appreciate this because we're, you know, the hope yeah, is we're to being increase the real IQ transparent. Of, yeah. Yeah. Which, and, I, and we're not, you're, and you're doing it in a way where you're not like, really uh shunning or, or hating on what others have done okay or pretty good or not so good with their policy you know the other argument to defend those who do run their cars and i mean run anything and everything through their policy in their defense they're looking at it as like that was money i was going to spend anyways Right. So by having it go through the policy first and that money is going to grow forever, I'm willing to pay that quote unquote control cost. And I've done videos in support of that. But just like the evolution of my YouTube channel, you know, there were things that I've said in 2018 that I don't necessarily align with all the way in now 2022. Finance is very, you know, you got to be adaptable very fluid with it and willing to be wrong so that you can course correct. So I've been wrong so many times in the past and I keep those videos up and I even comment. I'm like, Hey, I was wrong. I made a mistake here on this video. I'm showing you I'm human. I'm showing you, I make mistakes. Um, don't rely on everything I say. Don't just take it as gospel, but rather trust, but verify trust, but rev verify. And even in those videos where I've made mistakes, I'm like, run these numbers, prove right. me wrong, yeah. run the numbers, prove me. And then I have people who come back and say, Hey, uh, you, you made a mistake here or Hey, um, instead of saying borrowing, maybe you should say, uh, uh, I still get that wrong. Uh, again, borrowing from a right. borrowing against. Yeah. yeah. And that was another little epiphany I had. Um, my mentor, Steve Parisi actually took me to the language of what insurance companies use in their actual language. And so borrowing from and borrowing against is more of like an insurance agent. It's like an agency agent language um, that's used. But from what I understand, the insurance language, they actually say borrowing from yep. your cash value yep. policy. So eh, don't beat yourself up. I think I was beating myself up a little bit. I was like, wait, am I guiding people wrong on this? But I've now told my clients, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to beat myself up if I say borrow from, borrow against. You know what I mean. If you don't know, here's what I say in the video. I'm borrowing. I'm taking from yeah. here is here. Is, this policy, whether never we got to call it infinite banking or the and asset <laughs> is allowing you to create a loan. And you could say, I'm, I'm borrowing from my infinite banking strategy. So, yeah. Dude. So I try not to let the client beat themselves up. Right. Because I'm like, as long as you get the, the, the fundamentals, We're, um, you're going to do okay. Here's you know? what I'll then say. it's just a matter of, of, of mastering it. Here's what I'll say, dude, is we're talking, we're, we're able to have a deep conversation. There's not a lot of people that are willing to get deep and talk about certain things. So a lot of times I feel like people are pretty surface level and like all this stuff. So I appreciate that about just our friendship and, and our ability to speak on this. And I hope we can do more of this. And so that, that's the first thing I'll say. And then, and then the second thing I'll say is um, we're talking about some deep, powerful strategies. And let's be, let's be frank, the fact that someone's watching this right now is, is um, the fact that they know what infinite banking is or potentially knows what inf um, our velocity banking is and understands yeah. leverage Time and value creation. Like yeah. we're going back to our example, it's like, yeah, we could, we could ne negotiate like what is the better way to do this thing. And the majority of the world is doing the 3% or 4% rule and will never become wealthy because they're not, they don't have an ounce of leverage working in their favor. And, and yet, you know, so it's just one of those things. Perspective tells you that, um, pat yourself on the back, um, give us a follow, like this video, share it with people that need to hear this. Hey, I want to thank you for watching till the end. If you enjoy our content, please like share, subscribe. It helps other people find our channel and we really, really appreciate it. I also want to let you know that we have this thing called the better wealth efficiency quiz. And, um, our goal is to give you a wealth efficiency score in less than three minutes, um, and really highlight and get you to start thinking about the potential inefficiencies that you have in your life. So if you haven't taken the quiz, Go check out, it'll be the link uh, below. Check that link out.
take the quiz, and then let us know your score.